Hey guys, this is Matt for Creative. So these are disposable cameras. This is a Kodak Fun Saver. This is a black and white Ilford camera. And then finally, here's a Kodak waterproof camera. But these are all disposable cameras. Once you're done using them, you basically just get the film developed and then the body that is done. Sometimes you can like reconfigure it and like make it work with new film, but it's a lot of trouble. Uh, these go for in between $10 and now $20 and now they're even creeping up because the demand is so high. So what I wanted to take a look at is a non-disposable camera, but one that comes at an amazing price. So this one goes for between $30 and $40. This is a Harman camera. This is a 35 millimeter reusable camera, and it actually does come with two things of film. So if you think of film as costing in between, I think the cheapest, cheapest that I've ever seen is $299. It's probably not that good. And then the highest, I mean, they go in the teens. So think if this is maybe about $5 each, this is black and white film, by the way, but you can, next time, get color film if you don't want the black and white. So five, 10, so it's literally $20 for the body that you can continue to reuse, plus the film, which is five and five. It's almost like getting one of these, almost. I think the difference would be about maybe five or so dollars. but. Let's see exactly what this is like and compare it to the weight of the others. Of course, it's not going to be waterproof like the Kodak waterproof, but um, I mean, we'll see exactly what it is. I'm curious to see how, how heavy these are. Uh oh, I just got stuck. But yeah, uh, disposable cameras are selling at a extreme rate, so I think film is back as a way just to enjoy. Uh, taking photography. Oh, look, there's a little coupon for you guys. So this is Ilford. Wait, is this Ilford? Why does it say Ilford? Is Harman an Ilford company? Now, this is the this is one of the only cameras, film cameras that's not disposable. They have available in store at B and H. Now, the other ones are one hundred nineteen dollars or fifty four dollars. This one is by far a deal even if it is low quality glass and or i mean not glass sorry i always say that when i think about cameras even if it's low quality lens elements i mean it can't be terrible so let's open this up here and already what i'm seeing here is this is a chunky camera so let's take a look here i do like the way it fits in my hand i do kind of like oh no i thought that this was kind of grip material, but it is literally a sticker on there, just to kind of give it a look. No lens cap, so you're always gonna have the lens kind of open, and uh, unfortunately, that could cause some scratches. The viewfinder is nice, it's large. It's very clear and large, I can see everything right through it. Let's see, can you see that? That looks good. And we have here the film winder. We have the return spool right here. So you would turn this back just to get all the film back inside because of course with film, you don't want this to look at any light. So yeah, just be careful with your film. But let's look at the size. This is the, okay, it's not terribly, it's bulbous in the center here, but more or less, this one's just a little bit thinner in general. You just want to see and compare the size. Yeah, it's a little bit, this is a little bit thicker, but that's okay. But the one that's really, really slim is just look at this one. Oh wait, maybe you can't even see it. Look how slim that is in comparison. I love how slim this black and white camera is. Um, one thing that I was really curious because this one is Ilford XP2 Super 400 black and white film. This is the one that's really easy to get processed as black and white film. You can take it to the same places that do color film. Um, it's not like another version that they have that unfortunately you have to find special places to get this developed. So I'm curious to see the film that this one comes with is Pan 400 film. And it does not say if this is the easy to develop kind. Oh, and by the way, if you want to kind of pause and take a look at this, this is how you reload your film and get everything in the right place. 
let's see. Now I just want to see, oh you can see in the very center how hard the flash would be, where is it, it's right there. Just in case you want to see about how long the flash will kind of affect the area around you. And let's see, this says it does come with a AAA battery inside, and, wait, what is this flap? Yeah, the AAA battery is inside, oh that's kind of unique, usually on cameras the AAA battery is outside of it just for kind of protection sake. Let's open this up here. Now this definitely does feel plasticky as hell. It is extremely plasticky. And also, I don't want to break this while trying to open this up. All right, I'm hitting the little film, like this little release thing, but it's not letting me. Oh, I see, and by the way, here, this little button here, if you in-press that, that allows you to first press this, then turn the film thing back. So there's a process. It'd be good to kind of review the instruction manual included, because for me, it's literally digital. You just point and shoot, and that's it. With this one, it's a little bit different. So I'm having trouble actually opening this up. So let's take a look here. Press the A in the direction of the arrow which is up. Wait, it doesn't even show, like I know, I know it's really easy just to get this done, but I can't figure out how to open this door. And again, plasticky, oh, there we go. Plasticky camera, I do wanna be careful with it. So that's what the camera looks like inside. You have your door here. Let's see if we can load some film up. This is gonna be the first time, all right. So we are going to, now I haven't loaded a film camera probably, probably since the 90s. Uh, it's just been such a long time, I've never really been into it, and when I have used a film camera, it's been something like this, like a disposable camera. So I haven't loaded film in a long time. So I'm gonna keep this box out of sight of you guys, but right here, and I'm gonna try and load film. Can we do this? so that you can see as well. Don't mind the mess. I know it's super messy. All right, so we have the film camera here. Let's move this out of the way. So I'm going to insert the film here. All right, kind of notch this right there. And it should, wait, does this fall into place? Yeah, it should fall into place once I get this appropriately right. Hmm. Now, does this latch kind of... Hmm. I don't want to break this. I don't want to break it. Shoot. How do you get this inside? Hmm. Let's see. Press the A latch in the direction of the arrow and open the back of the camera door. Lift up the film. Rewind crank. Oh, you're supposed to lift up the, f oh, can this go up a little bit? Yep. See, that's where I was making the mistake. I was jamming it in there, but that's not how you do it. Look at the film, it looks purple. Again, this is a new film camera owner, myself. That's interesting. All right, so we now engage, turn this down. So this is kind of in place here, kind of shaking up and down. Let's see what the next step is. Push the rewind crank back into place, pull out the film from the film canister and hook the second hole 
onto the film take-up spool. Where's that? I see, it's right there. So the second hole, one, two. I guess if I pull a little bit too hard, then I can just re-spool it. It's a little bit harder than it seems, at least for me. Did I do it right? Ensure the film lays flat against the center of the camera and close the camera's back door. I guess that's kind of flat. There's a little jut for it, but I mean, what am I supposed to do? I've done what it asked for. Yeah, I've, I've got it on that second little peg and that's kind of where it's gonna live. So I'm going to close the door and hopefully I'm not ruining everything. All right, the next step. Continue to advance the film by turning the film advance wheel E until it stops. So this, press the shutter button, repeat this procedure one more time, and the film counter will show the number one. And the camera's ready to take pictures. So where's the film? Okay, so I'm gonna turn this. And then we're going to look at this little dial right there. We'll see what happens. So one. So it's locked. Press the shutter. We're going to take a little photo here. And yeah, we are at one. So if I did everything correctly, we are ready to take a photo. And let's see here. So let's see a little bit about using the flash. Let's bring this back up here. So the little flash engagement should be right here. Oh, you can hear it. Oh, do you hear that noise kind of loading? And there is our little light. Now, I have seen reviews on this camera where the flash does not work. So we're gonna give this a try. I'm gonna take this classic picture of the filming camera on three, one, two. Yeah, it worked. And then should I disengage the, yeah. And now I've disengaged. So I turn this way, flash, is disengaged. And now we'll crank. And that's it. We are at two. And how many photos come in this? Is it 36? Yeah, two 36 exposures. So that's actually a lot of photos. These ones max out at 27 photos. This here 36 times 2 is at 72 photos. That's amazing. For $30, 72 photos. Little wrist strap. Everything here. The only thing you have to worry about is the battery here for the flash. And if that doesn't work, then hey, maybe I'll just not use the flash. But I've seen some comparative photos on B&H's website under the review. So if you want to take a look too, take a look down there. This is a cute little camera. This is going to be a non-disposable film camera, a 35 millimeter film camera, which I'm excited to use. And um, yeah, I mean, for the longest time, I've been using this, this. And for me, I'm more digital than that. So this is what I'm used to having in my hand, something where if it drops, this is a lot of technology inside here, but look at, it's just bigger than the other option. And now let's see here, it's going to be, technically the body is thinner than this, but the lens jutting out here, that just makes a lot of difference. All right, so we just tried the, uh, what is this, the Harman camera.
which includes Kentmere Pan 400 black and white film. So we have this here. I've been pretty happy about how easy it was to get the film set up, get the camera set up. So I'm gonna be trying these out. And once I'm ready with pictures, after I go through 36 of these, you know, it's just, it's gonna take some time to get through this. But I'm excited to do it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the camera as it is right now, as it is using, because after I post this, I'm gonna start using this, and then I will be developing that film. Ask everything in the comments section below. Don't forget, I'm on Instagram at m8b9. You can email me at matt8b9 at gmail.com. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I think this is gonna be an amazing little camera to kind of feed into your film obsession. Maybe it's gonna be the first one that gets you into it, and you're like, can I do this? Can I really, really do this? And then maybe you can go and find one of those vintage Canon cameras or something like that, which would be kind of really nice because I know I have friends that do have those cameras. I didn't want to go in that far in that direction. But here, basically, I spent $20 for a camera and I spent $10 on some film. It's a good little package. But again, don't forget, this is a black and white, but you can put color in it the next time. So we'll see how that goes. Again, thanks, guys. I will see you next time.